thanks for everyone for coming out. This is a really big issue and we need to put a stop to it. And the only way we're going to stop it is if our communities if our communities around the country put an end to this. A bit about myself for anyone who doesn't know me. My name is Alan Flannery. I grew up out the road here in Behe. I grew up out the road in Behe. I went to Behe National School. I went to St. Neordex for my secondary schooling. I play football with Ordinary Sarsfields. And my first job was in the Twin Trees Hotel. I was collecting glass at weddings and doing bottles. Now, it's great to see so many people here. I see all walks of life from the Belknap community. But there's vulnerable people here, and there's children here. So if there's any yahoos in the crowd thinking about causing any trouble or any antisocial stuff, you may sling your hook now, you're not wanted. Whoa! Once I've finished here, I'm going to pass it over to Marie and Jason. They're going to go through the cold hard facts of what's going on around here. Once they're finished speaking, we're going to leave here. We're going to march peacefully up Ballina. We're going to ride up the road. We're not going on no footpaths. We're going right up the road, beeping or no beeping. And I'd like to ask everyone to remain completely silent while we do it. I don't want anyone shouting. I don't want anyone talking. And I don't want anyone laughing. This is not a joyful occasion. This is a somber occasion. This is for our town, and we need to make sure we look after our town. Once we get up to the Market Square, I'll say a few words, and Marie Graham will say a few words. So until then, thanks for coming, and I pass it over to Marie. Um, so I'd just like to take this opportunity again just to thank, thank everyone for coming today, but also for coming out this week in um, huge numbers to support um, what we've been doing here. Um, we're, we're standing here together to say a resounding no to the current proposal for an IPAS in the Twin Trees Hotel. So, I am a local resident. I grew up across the river in uh, Greenhills and I returned and bought my home there 10 years ago. Um, so this locality is part of me. I walk up and down this road every day. I have two children, a nine and a seven year old, and I'm trying to ensure that they grow up with a similar freedom and ease that was afforded to me as a child, but also that they go forward into the world with a sense of pride and admiration for their hometown. Um, so my uh, formal education is in engineering, but I actually spent most or half of my working career um, with various marginalised groups, um, such as recovering heroin addicts, um, juvenile det detainees. And for the past 11 years, I have run my own small business here in the town of Ballina. And I pride myself on not discriminating against anyone. Um, <laughs> the, tr the truth is that our town and our entire nation simply cannot cope with the huge numbers of asylum seekers entering this country. Yet month on month, the numbers are increasing with highs of over 4,000 in the first three months of 2024 alone. Um, the fact of the matter is that in Dublin, at Dublin airport last year, 4,700 people arrived at the airport and claimed asylum. And an astounding 87% presented with no identity documents or false identity documents. Now, it's a criminal offence to enter a state without a valid papers, yet deportation orders and prosecutions are far, few and far between. And from most recent government statistics, Georgia, Nigeria and Algeria are all countries deemed safe, yet these are the top three nationalities of people claiming asylum in Ireland. This begs the question, are we, as towns and villages around the country, being taken advantage of? Yes. So our healthcare system is in a state of disrepair and as hospital waiting lists swell with 689,000 on active waiting lists, our GP services are turning patients away with some then presenting at a crowded A&E to gain access to treatment that should have happened at a GP's office. We have local pregnant women who have had to register with GPs in Castlebar and Sligo because GP surgery in Ballina are full. 
These maternal health checks are essential to ensure the most positive and healthy outcomes for both our mothers and our babies. What happens if the mother cannot access these or make these long trips or take time off to travel to these appointments? Our schools also are full and as our government continues to cut funding year on year, our teachers are struggling to get to grips with delivering lesson plans in multiple languages with no additional funding aids. Our tourism in industry is on its knees and this in turn will have a detrimental consequences to our local economy. Ballina is marketed as a marketed worldwide as a tourism town, but a tourism town with no available beds is not a tourism town. Just this week, a bus of 50 German tourists landed in the town hoping to spend a few nights here. They were able to secure accommodation for just one night and then had to move on as there were no more available beds. Fall to Ireland says that every visitor spends on average 200 euro on top of what they've paid for their accommodation. Now this money goes to local shops, to restaurants, to bars, and it filters through this town and it keeps it alive. <laughs> we have a total of six B&Bs with 27 rooms available at the moment. Ballina Manor, Belique Castle, and the Ice House are fully operational with all beds available for tourism in a total of 131. Both the Great National Hotel and Mount Falcon have approximately 50% of their rooms and lodges already occupied on an ongoing basis. So just half are available for tourist accommodation. At the 